Welcome to the Ask Dr. Khan Show. This is episode 170, and you're just one whiteboard away from solving your health puzzle. And I'm a functional medicine practitioner, and every week I bring you content that's gonna help you solve your health puzzle. And we've been on the series on inflammation. And uh, if you missed the last three episodes, you really wanna go back and catch it, they're epic. Today we're gonna continue that conversation and talk about the difference between an autoimmune disease and an auto-inflammatory disease. What? There's a difference? There's a, such a thing as auto-inflammatory disease? Yes. So what we have here is we have autoimmune, which means that your immune system is attacking your own body. Autoimmune diseases are things like Hashimoto's, celiac disease, MS, things like uh, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Although in the scientific literature, Crohn's disease is kind of straddling between the two. So on the top here, we have what's called auto-inflammatory disease. Now, these are typically hereditary diseases that shows up in people. And uh, so an example will be, it's, it's called Mediterranean fever. It's an example of an auto-inflammatory disease. Now, they're different than autoimmune disease in that it's a different part of the immune system that's controlling that. So the auto-inflammatory disease is controlled by what's called the innate immunity, where the autoimmune disease is mediated by the, what's called the adaptive immunity. Okay. So what's the difference here? So your immune system has two main branches. The innate immunity is that part of your immune system that's already within your body, that came in your cell. Every single cell in your body has this. So some example of this, uh, of innate immunity, will be things like natural killer cells, things like your macrophages that we've been talking about for the past few episodes. Okay, so your macrophages, your mast cells, a lot of people have what's called mast cell activation syndrome. So mast cell is a type of innate immunity type of uh, immune cells. Even the prostaglandins. Prostaglandins is a type of immune chemical that triggers inflammation. So for example, when you take uh, ibuprofen, it's affecting the prostaglandin system. It's trying to shut that system down so you don't feel pain. That's how ibuprofen work. Other things will be like a complement system which triggers this part of the immune system. And then you have like your actual physical barriers. It's part of your innate immunity. It's built into you. So like your skin, the barrier, the skin barrier, your blood brain barrier, they're all part of your innate immunity. On the other hand, the adaptive immunity are things like your antibody production. So like B cells that make antibody. Primarily, autoimmune diseases are mediated by antibodies. That's why most of the blood tests that you run to check or diagnose autoimmune disease are antibody-based tests, like TPO antibody or thyroglobulin antibody for Hashimoto's, or myelin basic protein antibody for MS, and so on and so forth. So B cells is the part of a type of white blood cell that produces antibody, which is the adaptive immunity. Now, how that works is that when your body gets an infection, these B cells will make antibody, which is like a memory system to tag the bad guy. So it remembers, oh, I had an infection against this virus. I had a fight with this virus. So I'm gonna remember this guy. So the next time I see him come through the door, I'm gonna be able to jump, get a jump on it and eliminate that virus before it becomes a problem. That's the basics of, basis of vaccination, right? They inject you with a, a, a life attenuated virus or a dead virus so that your body can develop an antibody response against that viral protein. That's how anti vaccines work. Other type of uh, adaptive immunity cells are your T cells. And with the T cells, you have T helper cells. Okay, and then you also have uh, your cytotoxic T cells. So these are T cells that have gone to school. They have been stimulated by the antibody to recognize a specific virus or bacteria. So they're ready to, to go. These cytotoxic T cells basically are the T cells not only recognize the bad guy, but they actually, actually go kill it. So you have these different type of immune system responsible for different type of disease. Autoimmune disease is what most of our audience, most of you are searching answers for. 
for an autoimmune disease. And this is part of the immune system affected. But however, the reason we show this diagram like this is because all autoimmune disease have a component of an autoinflammatory disease or autoinflammatory component. And all autoinflammatory component have a component of an autoimmune disease. So they're kind of related. Now remember a couple of videos ago we talked about how inflammation and autoimmune disease trigger each other. We call it co-activation. Let's see if we can make room here. So we have the STAT3 triggering NF kappa B. And if these words are foreign to you, just go back a couple of videos. You'll be able to watch previous episodes that I go deep into this. But basically, these are triggers for inflammation. And, uh, or I should go the other way. These are triggers for inflammation. And this is triggered for autoimmune disease. So what happens is this chemical when it's released triggers auto, uh, autoimmune disease, and when this chemical is released, it triggers inflammation. And what happens, the more autoimmune chemicals you have, the more it's going to stimulate NF-kappa B, this chemical, to be produced, and they'll start to stimulate each other. So what happens is when you have autoimmune disease, you get inflammation. When you have inflammation, you get autoimmune disease. So that's kind of what this shows, right? Now, this it's a spectrum. So some people are completely just all antibody type of autoimmune conditions. So they're over here where it's very much an autoimmune issue, not so much of this auto-inflammatory component. And some people, they're just very inflamed without much autoimmune disease, right? And a lot of people are kind of in between. So the point is, when you have autoimmune disease, you are inflamed, without a question. There's a spectrum, there's some degree of both. So that's why in people with autoimmune, we always want to be addressing the inflammation. A lot of people mistakenly are addressing the wrong thing when they have autoimmune disease. For example, people with Hashimoto's, right? They're told that it's a thyroid problem. It's not. Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease. That means your immune system is attacking your own thyroid gland. So in this case, the real problem is the immune system attacking the thyroid gland. So it matters not how much thyroid hormone you take, your immune system is still attacking the thyroid gland. And taking the thyroid hormone doesn't stop the immune system from attack stop attacking the thyroid gland. So that's the problem. People take with Hashimoto's, take thyroid hormone, and they think that's all they need to do. And I'm going to tell you, for thyroid disease, lifestyle medicine, diet, nutrition, mindset, exercise, detoxification, lifestyle medicine should be the primary mode of care for people with thyroid disease. Thyroid hormone is an afterthought. It's like maybe you need it too. But even if you need thyroid hormone, you still need to address the autoimmune problem, which like I said earlier, involves inflammation as well. And that is so important to understand, okay? Now, again, in the past few episodes, we talked about how inflammation works, how when your immune system or when your cells and tissue becomes infected with a bacteria or virus, how does your body destroy that bacteria? And how does your body actually clear out those inflammation? How do your body resolve it? Again, I highly recommend you watch the past two to three episodes. It's going to really enlighten you. It's going to give you insight that you never had before. And uh, now, we're going to continue that conversation. Remember, what happens is you have this thing called NF-kappa B, which we listed right here. And this NF-kappa B is like your final common pathway. It's a nuclear protein, which means that it triggers the DNA. This is your DNA. It triggers your DNA to create these inflammatory cytokines. It becomes a loop, a cycle. Now, let's talk about today what can trigger that, okay? So it turns out that there's two things that can trigger this type of inflammation and it requires a multi-step process. So what you see here in red, it's called an inflammasome. You say inflammasome, what? Inflammasome, inflammasome. So give me some, give me some of that inflammasome, right? So inflammasome is a protein that triggers inflammation. Now this protein lives inside your cell. So this big bubble here is a cell with a nucleus and a DNA. So here's your nucleus with the DNA inside. And this inflammasome is basically a collection of protein that sit there disassembled. They're not really put together yet. They're like parts. They just lay there, but they're not put together just yet. So they don't work. And it requires a two-step triggering process. So the first step that you need is signal one. 
So signal 1 is IL1 beta. Now, this is an inflammatory cytokine. Remember, cytokine means cellular messengers. It's like text messages sent by the immune system to tell each other, hey, we have an infection here. We have an injury here. Send more cops. Send more you know, uh, neutrophils to the area to clear out the debris, clear out the infection. So this is a text messages sent by the immune system to tell your body that there's a tissue damage. So now, this will dock on this IL-1 beta receptor. So this is an IL-1 beta receptor, right? So the receptor acts as a, like a door. So this chemical doesn't get into the cell just by diffusion. It's going to dock onto this receptor. When it docks on it, it enters the cell, and that becomes signal number one. Okay, now signal one means your cell is being alerted by this text message, right? Text message that there's inflammation. And so it's alerting the cell that, hey, maybe there's something going on. I better be on alert, right? But it doesn't assemble the inflammasome just yet. It takes signal two, and signal two is ATP. Now you say, yeah, ATP, cellular energy, made by the mitochondria. It's good stuff, right? It's good if it's inside your cell and your cell's producing it. However, your cell makes a bunch of ATP because that's its job, to make energy, to make cellular energy to keep itself alive. So your cells are full of energy. When a cell dies due to inflammation or due to an infection, all these ATP comes pouring out of the ruptured cell. So kind of like the cell spilling the guts and spilling its body part as a cell ruptures due to infection or damage. So if this neighboring cell is spilling its gut, then ATP will be floating around in your bloodstream, and that ATP is going to dock on the ATP receptor, which is a receptor or door specifically for that. So you're on your cell surface, it actually has receptors to detect if there's an ATP floating around. Okay? Why would it do that? Because if ATP floating around is bad, that means neighboring cells are dying. That means bad news. We're under attack. So the example will be. You're walking in the forest, all right? You're just chilling, walking, and then you hear a chainsaw. You hear a chainsaw, like, whoa, what's that, right? You don't know what's going on, and you're like, okay, let's not freak out. Let's stay on alert. You're still moving or going about your way, but you're kind of paying attention. Where's that chainsaw coming from? Maybe somebody's cutting down a tree. Maybe there's, uh, you know, uh, people who are, you know, logging, right? So you hear the sound. That's signal one. You hear a chainsaw. Signal two is where you see a, a body part, a leg flying past you. You see a leg, bloody leg, laying on the floor. Ah! You freak out, right? Signal one is the chainsaw. Signal two is a body part, a leg laying there on the ground. You freak out. That's confirmation that, wow, neighboring cells or <laughs> neighboring human beings being chopped up. Bad news. You should alert you to get the heck out of there and call the police. And in fact, that's what the body does. Signal one, chainsaw. Signal two, body part. Freaks out, when it freaks out, the signal two will trigger this ATP receptor to, co to come in and signal the inflammasomes. Now the inflammasomes will assemble. They'll start to assemble, kind of like the Avengers. Avengers, assemble. Sorry, too much Marvel movie. But they will start to assemble, and when they assemble, they will start to make these chemicals. And these chemicals, there are these chemicals in your cell that are called pro-IL-1 beta and pro-interleukin-18. Pro means like prototype, right? The beginner stage of that, but not the adult, not the complete type. The prototype of these inflammatory cytokines. Remember the IL-1B, IL-1 beta? It's here. Remember, this is a text message sent by the immune system to tell the cell there's danger. So your body already has these chemicals inside the cell, but when these inflammasomes assemble, it'll trigger these guys to become the full-on IL. It's kind of like the missile being prepped and primed. And now when it gets a signal, the missiles go out. So now you get the IL-1 beta and IL-18, interleukin-18. That is the text message sent by the cell that was sent initially by other cells. So you see this can actually become a self-amplifying cycle. So let's use a different color. 
let's use pink here. So this can come back and become more text messages that's going to stimulate other surrounding cells. So the example will be a football field. Imagine a football field lined with a bunch of mouse traps, and the mouse traps are held open, and uh, there's a maybe a, a the, the mouse traps in the front is propped open, okay? And then you throw a ping pong ball into this field of mouse traps. The ping pong ball hits a mouse trap, pops up one. The one that pops up lands on another one, pops up the neighboring one, now two pops up. And then lands on the neighboring one, now four pops up. Pop, 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 pop. Now you're sending off a cascade of these mouse traps going off. That's kind of like how this works. As one cell senses danger and sends out these text messages, is literally set, triggering off all the neighboring cells to send off more text messages, and now you get this inflammatory cascade. That's the inflammation. Whether you have an infection, or you have toxicity, or you have injury to a tissue, like you banged your elbow, or you have autoimmune disease, or stress, or blood sugar issues, which can all cause inflammation, this process is what triggers that. Now you know what's happening at the level of the cell what is doing. This is important because you can see that this IL-1 beta is this text message being sent by the immune system and not only can this trigger neighboring cells, guess what? It could become an autocrine stimulation where this IL-1 beta that's released by the cell can go back and stimulate this very own cell to trigger this whole response. It becomes a, a real a big problem and that's why some people become chronically inflamed, chronically ill, and this can start to affect your immune system, you become autoimmune or start to suppress the immune system. So you start to get sick easily, you catch everything. Some people have like a virus and a bacteria and a candida and everything. We see this all the time in my virtual functional medicine practice where we do appropriate lab work, we identify the root cause. See, if you play the detective and you know what you're looking for, then you can dissect this problem and start to break it down. If you don't know what you're looking for, which unfortunately a lot of doctors are just treating the symptom instead of looking for the root cause, or they have no idea of the underlying physiology, this can become a very daunting task. Now, how do we fix this? Of course, as I say always, look for the root cause. If it's an infection, and you'd be surprised how common it is for people to have chronic viral infections, bacterial infections, candida, parasites. We'll be talking about those things as the, the show progresses through future episodes, so stay tuned at youtube.com slash DC to follow me on YouTube to watch these videos as this unfolds, so you start to fill in the blanks, remember one whiteboard at a time to solve your health puzzle, as well as follow us on Facebook, and we're getting Instagram and Twitter going as well, so follow me on social media. So now I wanna talk about not only how do we fix it, remember, identify the root cause, which may be an infection, but could be a toxicity as well. Mercury, for example, stimulates an inflammatory response like nobody's business. It's one heck of an antigen that triggers this antibody response and inflammatory response. So metals is a problem. BPA, phthalates, like things like plastic compounds is a problem. Pesticides are a problem. So we have to look at toxins and infection. And remember, I always say eating healthy is really important because certain food can trigger this as well if you have sensitivity to them. But remember, eating healthy, although important, eating healthy does not get rid of an infection or toxin. This is where testing with an experienced functional medicine practitioner like myself or others that you work with that can explain this to you and actually take you through a priorities to prioritize sequence so that we're fixing one step at a time and not jumping five steps ahead because there's a sequence to this. If you do things out of order, it wouldn't look right and it wouldn't work right, okay? Now, besides identifying the underlying root cause, which may be dietary issues, which may be infections and toxins, there are certain natural compounds that can actually help you dampen IL-1 beta. That's the point of this video, is to let you know that there's natural things that you can do, not medications, but natural herbs and supplements that has an effect on decreasing this amping up, this amplifying effect of IL-1 beta, which triggers this ping pong ball effect of mousetraps going off. Would you like to know that? I think that would be very helpful for you to know that. Again, this is not meant to self-diagnose, self-treat. This does not replace seeing a medical doctor or taking medication if you need it. This is just for education and information purposes, but it helps to know that there are things that you can do. And that's what we do with our clients to identify these pathways that may be out of balance and apply the appropriate 
supplementation, lifestyle change, and nutrition. So some of the things that can help dampen L1 beta and reduce its activity so that you can reduce inflammation includes things like sulforaphane. Now sulforaphane is a compound that's found in broccoli seed. So by eating a lot of broccoli or their supplements that contains an extract of sulforaphane, you can potentially dampen this IL-1 beta. Another thing is melatonin. Surprise, surprise there. People think melatonin is just for sleep. Melatonin is a hormone that does control your circadian rhythm and sleep. However, it's also a very potent antioxidant in its own right and has the ability to dampen IL-1 beta as well. So that's perhaps why sleep is so restorative because when you're sleeping, in deep sleep, you have higher levels of melatonin and that not only helps you sleep, but helps you re restore and regenerate your body by reducing some of this infl inflammation. So that's really interesting. Another thing is your flav flavonoid compound like curcumin. Curcumin is a compound or an extract found in curry. And one of our products, our flagship product is called Turmero Potency, and it's a liquid extract in a gelatin cap, in a uh, uh, glycerin uh, gel cap. And so it's really liquid supplement in a cap. And this contains three different types of curcumin compound to, among many other things, it has the ability to dampen IL-1 beta activity, as well as has an effect on, where is it? This NF-kappa-B cycle. This NF-kappa-B cycle can be self-amplifying just like this, can trigger itself, become a self-vicious cycle. So turmeric can work on both of these levels. Very useful. Resveratrol is another flavonoid compound that's found in red grapes. And uh, this can also have a lot of help in reducing the activity of IL-1 beta. Other things that can help is EGCG, which is found in green tea, things like ginseng, things like quercetin, which is a flavonoid compound found in a lot of citrus bioflavonoids, uh, citrus fruits, uh, things like gardenia, which is an herb, and propolis. So these are just some example of natural compound that have, again, the idea here is not just go out and take everything that I listed, but be very targeted. And I think getting the right test, working with a professional, getting good history done, because your history, your symptoms, signs, how you got here is what's gonna explain why you have these problems. And even tell me who are experienced in identifying these pathways as far as do you have more inflammatory component, autoimmune component, is this cycle being ramped up, and what the root cause is, just by having a conversation. So if you need help, please call 480-988-6269, and you can also go online to askdrcom.com slash get started, I'll put the link in this post, so that you can schedule a 15 minute discovery call with our assistant, with our staff, to talk about how a program is different, how a program can help you, using a functional medicine approach, but not just functional medicine. A lot of people say functional medicine. It's really a logical approach, actually figuring stuff out, playing the detective, and finally solve your problem once and for all. I'm Dr. Peter Khan, hope you like this video. If you liked it, please share this video with as many people as possible so people can know that there's hope, there are things that you can do, no matter how chronic, how severe the condition you or your loved one has, there is hope for you. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our Facebook page, and we'll see you next week at the Ask Dr. Khan Show. Take care.